Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at anything for the Raspberry Pi 5, but recently I got in what I consider the best case on the market for the Pi 5. And of course, there are a lot of cases out there for the Raspberry Pi, but this has a lot built in. It doesn't just dub as a case for the Pi, because this has active and passive cooling. It also brings those micro HDMI ports up on the Raspberry Pi 5 to full-size HDMI ports. And you can supercharge your Raspberry Pi 5 by adding an NVMe drive. And all of this is gonna run through the new PCIe lanes on the Pi 5. Another thing we've got here is really great power management because it actually uses the same chip that's in the Raspberry Pi Pico, the RP2040. This is the all new Argon One V3 M.2 NVMe PCIe case for the Pi 5. And another thing that a lot of people were missing on the new Raspberry Pi 5 was a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. With this case, it does add one on the rear of the unit. Now, in order to get this up and running with an NVMe drive, obviously you'll need an NVMe SSD. I opted to use a cheaper PCIe 4.0, 512 gigabyte Kingston drive here, but you could go with 3.0 and it will support older PCIe SSDs. This is gonna be so much faster than a micro SD card or even USB storage. Argon 40 has recently released a ton of new products for the Raspberry Pi 5, including their new USB-C PD 27 watt charger. They sent this over along with the Argon One V3. And in this video, we're gonna be putting this case together to see how it performs and looks. Now, I've always been a big fan of these Argon 40 cases. We did have the Argon one for the Raspberry Pi 4, which turned out to be an absolutely amazing case. But now that the Pi 5 supports PCIe, we can really get some amazing speeds out of storage. And uh, with this NVMe case, I think this is really gonna be the way to go. The case does have a few sections. Now the top half of the case does contain our RP40 chip along with our blower style fan. And this is an active and passively cooled setup. You can also add one of their optional audio DACs. But basically with this case, the extra aluminum up top is gonna to make contact with the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 5, extracting that heat. And the blower style fan is gonna keep that aluminum nice and chilly. We can also set up different fan curves using their software. Now here's their HDMI slash power board. This is gonna bring those micro HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi 5 up to full size. And that's kind of one of my biggest gripes with the board itself. So with this, we do get two full size HDMI outputs. And of course, we've got the bottom half, which is gonna house our NVMe drive. And again, this is not running over USB. Since the Pi 5 does have PCIe, that's how it's gonna be connecting. With older Pis, we used to be able to connect SSDs to it using USB, but that kind of killed performance a bit. With this new PCIe setup, we should have a much faster system. This case does come with two thermal pads and it's gonna make contact with two sections on the Pi. First up, we've got the CPU. Obviously we need to keep this nice and cool, but we also wanna cool down that PMIC on the Pi 5 because it can get quite hot, but luckily this case does both for us. So I've already got the thermal pads installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect the daughter board here, HDMI and power board. Now, before we install this in the top section of the case, we do want to install our ribbon cable for that PCIe connector on the Pi 5 because it's kind of going to be out of place. We just want to go ahead and put this in before we slide everything in the top side of the case. With that in place, basically what we're going to do here is just go ahead and plug this right in. We need to line up our GPIO pins and our power pins. So uh, GPIO pins on the Pi 5 going to line right up. We'll go ahead and press everything in. Also got that PCIe ribbon cable here so we can connect it to the bottom half of the case with that NVMe drive. Now with this, it does come with a nice little aluminum cooler that goes on the bottom. We're gonna slide our NVMe drive in here and I've already got my Raspberry Pi 5 set up to boot from NVMe. I've also installed Raspberry Pi OS on this Raspberry Pi separately. And this is gonna be very important. I would highly recommend checking out Jeff Gearling's website and YouTube video on NVMe drives for the Raspberry Pi 5. He goes into depth explaining how to get everything set up. And with this, you will need to add a line to the boot firmware config.txt. Now you will have to do this from within software. So you could first boot from a micro SD card with Raspberry Pi OS installed. It's actually pretty simple. And if you follow his tutorials, you'll have no trouble setting it up. Bottom side here is full aluminum, so it's gonna cool that NVMe drive off. And uh, I do have kind of a faster drive here for what the Raspberry Pi 5 is really gonna support, but this was cheap enough and it does work. It's PCIe 4.0, nothing super fancy. We've also got this thermal pad here that'll go right over that NVMe drive. It's gonna make contact with the bottom aluminum cooler. 
four screws go in here and everything should be nice and secure. Now comes the tedious part, but real quick, I want to show you the daughter board that we installed on the Raspberry Pi 5 does have some power outputs to power that NVMe drive. It's actually set up really nicely and it's not that tedious. You just need to kind of lay this down on the table. You need to plug the ribbon cable into the connector on the NVMe half. It can be a little annoying, but it's not that hard to do. Once we have the ribbon cable plugged in, we can just kind of fold everything over. It's going to go right into place. Four screws are going to secure the top half to the bottom, and we've also got some rubber feet that we can install. But once it's all put together, it's a really nice looking setup. Super sleek, not much going on around front, top, or sides, and sitting on a desk next to a monitor, I think it looks really good. And around back, we've got that 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB Type-C power in. It's taken both of those micro HDMIs up to full-size HDMIs, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and we've got a power button here which works right out of the box. And of course, just like the older Argon One case, we can still access all of our GPIO pins here on the Raspberry Pi. We've got a magnetic top here that just kind of goes right on and off. Everything's labeled. Really nice setup. Like I mentioned, I've already set up my Raspberry Pi 5 and that NVMe to go ahead and boot. Up front, we can still see those status LEDs, and this thing boots really, really fast. My monitor actually can't keep up with it. Kind of goes right into the operating system before I get any kind of warning at all. And there it is. We're ready to use the Raspberry Pi 5. Booting from a micro SD card has definitely gotten a lot faster on the Pi 5. I've been booting from USB. I really haven't messed around with any kind of SSDs or NVMe drives. But now that I've got this case here, this is probably the only way I'm going to be running my Pi 5. It definitely makes a huge difference. Now, I do have my Raspberry Pi 5 overclocked because I wanted to check out, you know, thermals with this whole unit here. Everything loads up much quicker than it does from a micro SD or even a fast USB. For instance, we'll go ahead and load up Chromium, just the web browser, and we'll go over to YouTube real quick. Now, even without an overclock on the CPU or GPU side with the Pi 5, you will definitely notice a difference having faster storage. That's one thing that's really held these units back in the past, just the slower micro SD. And I know our interface has definitely improved with the Pi 5, along with newer cards being really quick, but they can't keep up with this NVMe SSD running over PCIe. I mean, it's really, really fast. Loading up, let's say GIMP here almost immediately loads up into the interface, I can go ahead and start doing some photo editing right here. I did run some speed tests. I also ran some stress tests on the Raspberry Pi 5 just to test out that cooling system. And with this, it is an actively cooled fan. It'll go off, it'll go to a lower RPM if you need it to, and you can fully program the fan curve using the Argon software. Over on their website, they explain how to install it. Really easy to do. After a little bit of testing, I wanted to give you an idea of the temps here and the speeds from that NVMe. This Raspberry Pi 5 is overclocked to 3 GHz on the CPU, 1 GHz on the GPU. And using software called Stress, I ran a 10 minute stress test on the unit. We only hit a maximum temperature of 67 degrees Celsius. And that fan does come on and off. It's not loud at all. You really kind of got to get close to it to hear it. And when it comes to storage speeds, it's really going to depend on what SSD you use. Like we saw, I'm using a cheaper Kingston PCIe 4.0 512GB drive. This is set up for PCIe 3 through software. As for boot times, we're in user space in 12.6 seconds. Just to give you an idea, my 64GB SanDisk cards that I usually use take about 16 seconds. I mean, it's not that far off there, but you know, the Pi 5 does kind of boot fast on any kind of storage media. And just taking a look at overall disk read, disk write, 4K random read. On the left hand side, we've got the SanDisk Ultra. It's a 64 gig card. Disk read over on the SD card is 41 megabytes per second. Using HD Parm, same exact test here. Disk read on that NVMe is 423 megabytes per second. Cached disk read, 430. Disk write, 280 and so on and so on. I mean, you can see it's a tremendous jump in speed when you compare it to micro SD cards. And with something like the Raspberry Pi 5, you can definitely feel it in everyday tasks. I mean, just even booting the system up, launching a web browser, launching any application is going to be much quicker using faster storage like this. So overall, I think the new Argon One V3 M.2 case for the Raspberry Pi 5 is definitely an awesome case. 
List price on this is $49. It's definitely a bit expensive when you're talking about cases, but we've got a lot built in here. And in the end, it's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about this case for the Raspberry Pi, I'll leave some links to Argon40's website down below. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But like always, thanks for watching.